Hi, my name is Boli Koko. I'm a Second Life resident. And today I'm at the very first place in Second Life, Daboom, created in 2003. I believe that being a resident of Second Life, it's important to know about its history, its culture, and how we got here today. Welcome to this very special episode of the history of Second Life. My sources are from the Second Life Wiki, the Second Life fandom page, the in-world historical museum of Second Life, the Second Life community forum, and various articles. We will explore today how Second Life is born and how the metaverse grew to the Second Life we have today. So let's go! separate the video into three parts. The first part is about Philip Rosdell, Linden Lab and Second Life Birth. The second part is about Second Life release and the early years. The third part will be about the evolution to today's Second Life. We have to start at the beginning of internet with the one and only founder and father of Second Life, Philip Rosdell. Known as Philip Linden, to the Second Life community, he's a legend and very loved. In 1994, Philip Rosdell suggested that he could use the internet to connect together lots of computers, to simulate a virtual world where everyone could go. He shared his story to Inc. magazine in an article about him named How I Did It. Philip explains in 1996, he starts to work for the company Real Networks with a lot of amazing people. He described this company as one that gave him a great experience in engineering management. This is at that time that he felt he was going to create Second Life. In 1999, Philip Rosdell is back to San Francisco and ready to start Linden Lab. He starts the office at 333 Linden Street. This is where the name Linden Lab comes from. It was located in Highest Valley. He hires also his first employee, Andrew Meadows, aka Andrew Linden. Andrew is very famous to be the very first Linden and known to be as closer as anyone else to Philip Rosdell in his projects. Philip also explains that he and Andrew were very aware at that time that the upcoming baby Second Life they were about to create would be a complex and emergent system based on an economy, people contribution, just like the 3D version of internet. And also another idea, that it would be a creative space where people could become entrepreneur. But Second Life was not the first days of Linden Lab. Andrew Linden stated that Linden Lab was more likely a hardware company based on haptics. If you don't know haptics, think about VR headsets, game controllers, they are all based on haptic. Haptic in the dictionary is everything related to the sense of touch. Philip Rosdell and Andrew were developing the rig. And no, it's not about your rig mesh in Second Life. The rig was a haptic device that can be easily taken as the ancestor of VR headsets. The goal was to immobilize the person in this device and immerse the person inside the virtual world. That's where Second Life appears. Second Life was to be the software of this device. Eventually, Second Life became a success and the rig was left away. Linden Lab then focused on Second Life. But it was no easy time. Philip states that they were six very quiet years. The beginning was most likely fun, but as they grew, it became more of a struggle and discouraging when they became about 30 employees. In 2003, only 11 employees were left and they did a change. Linden Lab said to people that what they create is their own intellectual property. They own it, they can claim copyright and earn money from. Also for the land, Linden Lab decided to make it like real world and make property and land have value. Around 2004, it started to bring a lot more money. By 2005, they had a few millions. By 2006, it was the buzz. But what was Second Life first days like? Let's go back before the buzz and even the launching of Second Life to the Alpha era. Here we are at the historical museum of Second Life in Phobos, one of the original 16 regions of the grid. There is something very important in here, the Primitar, and you can get it for free. Remember the rig, the device, it needed the software, right? So the Lindens created Linden World in 2001. The very first Linden World was a virtual place 
where the Linden could develop. Here a footage released in 2006 by James Linden of Linden World in 2001. You can see the Primitar made of Prims, it's our ancestor. It could move into the virtual space, fly and shoot. Lindens were spending hours shooting bombs to terraform the land. That sounds crazy but it's true. And that was pretty much it, a building, trees and bombs. It's later in an article that we know Linden World evolved into something more elaborated. The Tech TV Vault article from 2002 describes it as an interactive 3D simulated environment created and controlled entirely by its users. They also had an interview with Philip Rosdell. Linden Lab was only a startup back then. Philip explained in this interview what it was. That was basically baby second life. Let's read the interview. Linden World breaks away from other online multiplayer environments by focusing on construction, not destruction. In a small converted warehouse in San Francisco, a tiny startup called Linden Lab is busy building a virtual garden of a den. It's called Linden World, an interactive 3D simulated environment created and controlled entirely by its users. Linden World is fundamentally a place, said Philip Rosdell, CEO and founder of Linden Lab. It's an organic online world. It is built by the people who participate in it, who live there. Linden World is actually a virtual environment that lives on a network of servers housed elsewhere in San Francisco. To access Linden World, users with broadband connections log onto the network. Proprietary technology developed by Linden Lab allows the simulation to stream textured, realistic 3D images to users in real time. The same year, Linden World was renamed Second Life as they were getting closer to the beta version. It's Robin Linden, the head of marketing back in time, who explained that during the alpha period, the grid was named Linden World and that as soon as the beta was about to be ready, they needed a name that would translate the entire complexity, involvement and expansion that defines this virtual world as it grows. They thought of many names, among them Sansara, Life 2, and they eventually chose Second Life because it was translating their wish to see Second Life become as big as First Life aka Real Life. It was then time to invite people to test the alpha before the beta release. I am right now in the Governor's Linden Mansion. Governor Linden is an avatar that controls the lands of Second Life. This is actually the house of Stellar Sunshine. Stellar Sunshine is the eve of residence. She joined Second Life the 13th March 2002 as the very first resident. It's an important heritage of the Second Life Alpha era. Wagner James, author of the Making of Second Life book, explains that Stellar Sunshine was invited to test the Alpha version of Second Life and on her first night, she created the first piece of user-generated content, the Beanstalk. It's still in Second Life. It's a big tree. There's a challenge, try to jump from leaf to leaf without flying and get to the top. This is indeed the oldest challenge of Second Life. November 2002, the beta version starts until June 2003 which was the official launch. During beta many things were set for the official launch ahead. No more Primitar but avatars, they look like this. This is the original default Second Life avatar, you can do the same one today. Second Life introduced 16 regions into the grid. The grid by its name Agni is the virtual world of Second Life. It's like Earth, a virtual Earth. Think about Google Earth. This is the grid. The grid was the size of Sansara and actually was Sansara itself. Sansara is today the biggest continent of Second Life and home to the historical first regions. Daboom is the first region. In the Second Life folklore, it says that Daboom refers to the creation, the Big Bang and Second Life. For Second Life, all these 16 regions have names of San Francisco streets. Where Second Life is born, here they are and they are all in Sansara continent. Daboom, Clara, Clyde, Federal, Freeland, Hawthorne, Mina, Natoma, Rich, 
Shibley, Stanford, Stillman, Taber, Varney, Welsh and Zoe. These were added the 2nd November 2002. That was like real life. There was disco, places to meet, attractions, but the beta was close to the public. And by the way, in Daboom, you can find the disco that was created by Philip Linden. In the Toma region, we can find the legendary statue of the man. I suggest you to say hi to the statue at least one time in your virtual life. Natoma was a region that held cities built by the Linden, like Linden City, Linden Town, in the alpha stage of second life. Most things were deleted as everything was moved into the beta and the official launch. But one thing has survived that alpha era, it was the statue of the man, made by old John Linden in 2002. It says that the man greets on its hill from far the new residents of Newby Coral, the newcomer area that was placed after the Linden city was destroyed. The beta was on until the official launch. 23 June 2003. This is the first trailer in 2003. Let's talk about the first things of Second Life. Second Life was not free, you had to pay to join. They were paid subscriptions. They evolved later into the basic account and the premium account that we know today. We even have a super premium account coming on the way 2021. First of all, there was no Linden Dollar. Linden Dollar was introduced by the end of 2003, that's a few months after the launch. With that also came a tax to keep the simulator regulated, 10 lindens to create a prim and 3 lindens per week to keep it on the land. Fun fact, residents would cheat, you just had to take your prim into your inventory the day of paying the 3 lindens and raise it back the day after so you wouldn't have to pay the 3 lindens per week tax. The economy base was here, today it's free to raise a prim or anything and keep it as long as we have the right. There was no teleport at that time, people had to actually travel. This is when the telehubs make their appearance in world. First telehubs come in version 110. You had the option to pay to teleport yourself to another telehub. The telehub was a sort of station with freebies, advertising boards, a map with the actual position in the grid, and of course the option to teleport at a price depending on how far you wanted to teleport. You can still find telehubs in the old original regions, the one at Daboom is still there. Today teleporting is free, and you can teleport everywhere. Also consider back in time the grid was smaller than today, so it was okay. Today it would be a nightmare, Second Life is so huge. Fun fact found at the Historical Museum of Second Life. As traveling was quite expensive in the early times, someone called James Miller decided to create a flying taxi. It's crazy, you could travel in the flying taxi for a price cheaper than the telehub. There were even organized tours. You can find a replica of the flying taxis of James Miller Taxi Co. at the Historical Museum of Second Life. And then eventually Linden Lab started the land sale, so residents could buy or rent land. It has become a main income for Second Life for many years with the premium membership. Remember, there weren't much big designers yet, so it was not a huge income back then, until the real boom. All these first things were a solid basis for the Second Life to come. 
And finally at last, the main things that got us here today in 2021. Please keep in mind that we cannot state every little thing that Linden Lab has done to raise Second Life to what it is today, but we can focus on some important moves that Linden Lab has done because at the end of the day, the Lindens works every day to make it a better place and this is 18 years of work going on until now. Here are some of the most consequent things Linden Lab has done and has had a huge impact to lead us to today. Let's locate ourselves in early 2005. We will of course stop by the huge mediatic buzz of Second Life. 2005, something that does not exist anymore today at the regret of many users and that has impacted deeply many teenagers. Second Life Teen and it would be unfair for me to not speak about it because every teen who was on Second Life Teen was very impacted by this experience. Second Life Teen starts the 4th February 2005, it was for teenagers from 13 to 17 years old, which means Second Life was only for 18 years old people with verified age. Teen Second Life had its own grid, its own website and it was full of teens and life. Teens there would explore, create, roleplay, game. There was also education and pedagogy as well. It was a field of true freedom for the teens. It must have been amazing, honestly. Teen Second Life looked like this compared to Second Life. This is its size. The regions are still alive since the teen grid was a part of the main grid. So if you was in teen second life, you can still visit the original regions that have been moved to second life main grid. On the second life community forum, an old resident named goth girl Demonia described the regions and what it was like. Oasis was where teens would sell their items and there was a Linden Lab building with freebies. Nyx was the freebies market. Bay City was the city for the rich teens, they could use their prim bonus. Gordon was the military base of the Black Talons. Rowling was New Rome. And Bannockburn was ASR. Now, this is important in Second Life history. ASR is the Army of the Grid, it stands for the Army of the SF Republic. This military existed in 2007 on the main grid and was one of the biggest combat structures of Second Life. But it is reported on fandom website that its very first days were in teen Second Life and Bannockburn was the base. It's where it started with the idea of a resident called Sean Hutchinson. I am not sure if today the ASR is still among the biggest combat structures or even alive, but it was from Teen SL to late 2014 something big. Unfortunately, after 2014, there is no more much information about it. Second Life Teen was very creative, it was a true space of freedom for teens. There were also education structures involved in it, but unfortunately it was taking a lot of time to manage Second Life and Teen Second Life together and of course Teen Second Life was probably not profitable enough. So what do you do with something that takes you too much time and doesn't bring enough money? Second Life Teen lived for 9 years from 2005 to 2014. It's in August 2014 at the annual convention of Second Life community that Philip Rosdell announced that the Second Life Teen will close by the 31 December. There was no coming back. He announced that every person under 16 years old will have its account terminated and people over 16 years old would see their account transferred into the main grid of Second Life, so basically moving to Second Life. The access to Second Life Teen was completely closed and removed then, and a few months before the closing, on the 31 December, the Second Life Teen website was already down. This led to various negative feedbacks, especially for the pedagogical structures. They saw their hope for a future virtual world for teens and the pedagogic structure fly away. 
This also broke the heart of many teenagers under 16 who had to wait to be 16 to play Second Life. Imagine that tomorrow Second Life close and your account gets deleted. It's devastating for a teen, even for an adult. They were deeply impacted by Second Life teen experience. Eventually, they could create an account back when they would become 16, but they could not recover their old account. Everything was lost. We also know that by the closing of Second Life Teen, it caused an important wave of Linden Lab employees' dismissals, of course. The pedagogy structures, education centers and teens then moved very quickly to other virtual worlds not owned by Linden Lab. In other words, Second Life Teen was a beautiful story that ended bad for both parts. Today you can join Second Life if you are 16 years old. From this splitting, are born the general, moderate and adult maturity content rating that you can find in Second Life. Of course, probably one reason that Teen Second Life had to shut down was because Second Life was getting very busy by late 2006. It's a big year. First of all, Second Life reached its 1 million residents on 18th October 2006. A special Linden Bear was made for this. If you don't know Linden Bears, every Linden employee has one. And if you ever cross a Linden, you can ask them for their bear. They all have their very own one made by themselves. And they can send you a copy of it, it's part of the Second Life culture. You remember at the beginning of this episode, by 2005 Second Life made some millions and it led to a buzz? Here we go. Second Life hired PR Lewis, a company that published articles about Second Life around the world. It started to really bring attention in America and then in the entire world. Second Life gets a massive mediatic attention regarding a business magazine. This is the 1st May 2006. The iconic An Shishung, an English teacher from China, will make the cover of Business Week magazine and many American magazines. CNN even called her the Rockefeller of Second Life. She's the very first millionaire of Second Life. She became a millionaire by selling and renting land. She grew so fast that she attracted a lot of attention and her story is amazing. I remind you that today many creators in Second Life are making the double of a normal salary in America or Europe per month if not more. She inspired so much people to join Second Life and become themselves rich. She is so big that it's told that the Lindens refer to her as the government when they speak of her. Some people think Anshu was already rich before starting the virtual business. She will shut down the false stories in an interview. She started Second Life with $9.99 USD. She was a teacher in China, really not a rich person. She just invested that much and saved the money she earned after. Since Second Life allows us to create and sell with our own copyright and ownership, she started selling animations and saved money until going to higher levels, land, estate. Today, she still established as the biggest estate company of Second Life. She also has many employees and her own website, The Unchecks. Jessica Chung, Candy Azur, Lorena Chung, these names ring a bell to you? These are all part of the Anche estate empire. This created a mediatic bomb and we all know the next step. The whole world ran to Second Life. There's barely a country that did not know about Second Life in 2006 and 2007. It was everywhere. That was the big boom. Companies would rush into Second Life, politicians, banks, it was just massive. While the whole world was busy with Second Life, investing, playing, earning money, Second Life was expanding itself in 2007. Two revolutionary things appeared in this year. The revolutionary wind light is introduced. It's huge. 2 April 2007, a big day for photography, machinima and the environment of Second Life. If you don't know what is the wind light, it's a feature of Second Life that allows you to change the sky environment, the water environment, the clouds and the lighting of the virtual world. It's a big thing. 
And another revolutionary feature is introduced in August 2007, the voice. Finally, people can speak with their true voice in a microphone. It's a massive feature of Second Life as well. But something terrible happened in late 2007-2008, the after buzz. Financial crisis occurred in real world and that obviously touched also Second Life. The companies in Second Life who had invested had very big expectations of income. The results were far from their expectations. And Facebook was growing massively and getting powerful. On top of this, Facebook was much more easier than Second Life. Let's call this a tsunami, a very big one. As a result, everyone was vulnerable, and that was very dark times for Second Life, more precisely Linden Lab. A massive amount of companies left Second Life because they did not earn what their goal was set to. And with the financial crisis, consumers too would not spend as much money as before. There were a lot of not so pretty things that happened. Companies who invested left, universities and education structures left, language centers left, political structures left, and we're talking about Dell, Harvard, American Apparel, banks, these type of companies. And to top it all, Second Life suffered from dark rumors about pedophilia, violence and prostitution that made a big scar in Second Life image until today. Just a reminder, Second Life fights these illegal activities continuously, just like any other social networks to limit predators and illegal stuff. Medias did dirty to Second Life, that's the least we can say. This is very unfair because these things are not exclusive to Second Life, but to the whole internet, especially social networks, Second Life being partly, yes, partly one of them. It all started from mediatic buzz, we can easily point out that Second Life was just not ready for such a huge wave of companies, structures and obviously evil people. And the departure of three main figures of the original first engineers of Second Life just adds to it a lot more drama. Corey Linden left in December 2007. Philip Rosdell mentioned him in a BBC interview as a fantastic guy, co-founder and one of the original 10 engineers who started with him. Corey has helped in the LSL script system of Second Life. He was committed in intellectual property and open source code in Second Life. And to finish this terrible dark time, at last, in 2008, former founder and CEO Philip Rosdell announced that he is leaving for another job. His decision was taken with a lot of sadness from his fans, from residents, I'm sure even Linden employees. He is the undisputed father of Second Life, his vision, his philosophy deeply impacted Second Life and Linden Lab. Without him, there would be no Second Life ever. He stays a legend to everyone, an icon and an extremely loved founder. He is even qualified as a genius ahead of his time. Andrew Linden left to join Philip Rosdell on his new project High Fidelity. Today, Philip Rosdell is in his company of high fidelity. It's not anymore a project. After this, the next years shows multiple changes in the Linden Lab CEO department. Philip Rosdell stepped down from CEO in 2008. Mark Kingdon becomes CEO in 2008 until 2010. He stepped down. Philip Rosdell becomes interim CEO with Bob Coming, who was already a Linden. Bob becomes the CFO. Then Bob Coming assured the role of CEO alone. That was basically Philip and Bob saving the CEO place while having a new one, but not just any new one. Rod Humble becomes the CEO in 2010 until 2014. He stepped down. That leads to our current CEO, Ebe Altberg, who steps in as a CEO in 2014 and now ongoing. By the way, under Ebe Altberg, we can see that many things has happened. SL Go, Sansar, he changed a lot of things in premium, he made Second Life pretty busy. And at last, 2021 news, Linden Lab is now part of Waterfield Group. It has been acquired by Brad Oberwager 
and Randy Waterfield. That was surely not the end of Second Life, unlike some people who like to stop the time in 2008. Second Life will eventually continue its road despite the aggressive after buzz. By 2008 and 2009, Bay City, where I'm standing right now, a brand new style of regions, will be introduced to the grid. It's beautiful, right? Linden Lab even gave a template of Bay City to residents so that they could build their own stuff and buildings back in time, and then they relaunched it. It looks like a proper city far from the very old lands and trees. And Zindra later comes in 2009. It's a completely adult continent with adult regions and it will be on the grid as well. But most importantly, the marketplace comes to life in 2009. Linden Lab will acquire Onres and X Street SL to create the marketplace. Revolution again. What do we use the most besides the wind light, the voice? Of course, our money, we shop where in the marketplace mostly is probably the biggest numbers of transactions in dollars for virtual goods in the world linden dollar is of course the biggest virtual world currency excepting the cryptocurrencies yes 700 millions of dollars per year with the users transactions Later, the community forum and community tab will enter in the Second Life website. The old one will be archived. Before that, Linden Lab bought the social network Avatars United, a social network for all virtual worlds avatars. But it closed a bit after it did not last very long. That's so sad, but do not worry. 80% of the Second Life community is all over Facebook, Flickr, and even Instagram. Just make an account for your avatar. It's very okay. The sister of the grid comes in as well, Aditi. Do you remember the main Sigan Life grid name? It's Agni. It's all names inspired by Sanskrit, something the first Lindens loved very much, it seems. While the beta grid named Aditi makes its appearance in late 2008, the beta grid Aditi is used by creators to upload their creation and test them without having to play the upload fee of the main viewer. It's free to join, but you have to register and yet to be approved, and it's widely used by Second Life designers. But it's really in 2011 that Second Life stepped up its game with Mesh. Yes, Mesh. Because of course, before August 2011, everything was system looking, default looking, noob looking, call it as you want. But when Linden Lab allow users to import Mesh from Blender and Maya, it's another revolution. And the reason why Second Life has the best looking and most realistic avatars of all virtual worlds. No one can equal a Second Life Mesh avatar. Look at me and try to make me in another virtual world. I don't think this is possible. And if you think the Second Life website images are made by graphic designers, no, it's made by the users and Second Life select photos of users regularly and showcase the most amazing avatars on the Second Life website and their social networks. And there we go. This is our Second Life. It's alive. It's here. It has passed generations. It's 17 years old. I think there are a few things as a second lifer we should absolutely do one time in our virtual life. Of course, say hello to the statue of the man in Natoma. But another one very important, it's the Burn 2 festival previously named Burning Life. It's a virtual replica of the very famous Burning Man festival that takes place in San Francisco every year. Philippe Rosdell went there in his young days, way before he created Second Life, but it gave him many ideas for his dream to create a virtual world. Every year, Burn 2 occurs in Second Life during one week. I do think the Second Life community forum and blog features it. They have their own website, it's a big desert land where residents can build anything they want, celebrate themselves as they are during one full week, just like the Burning Man festival. Do not forget that Second Life celebrates its birthday every year with the festival called SLB. For example, this year it was SL17B, for next year it will be SL18B and on and on. There's a whole week of celebrations dedicated around the grid to Second Life birthday every year. You should absolutely visit it. 
Of course, there's much more activities like Shop and Hub, the Second Life SLEA, Endowment for the Arts Festival, and many more. This is probably why we are still here residents of Second Life, Second Lifers, lovers of Second Life. It's still a true Eden Garden of Freedom activity, but most importantly, of anything we want it to be. This was the history of Second Life. I hope this educates young residents who are joining Second Life and those who have no clue about the history of Second Life. It's important to know it, to educate ourselves. I will also suggest you an amazing book that I could not get for myself as I live in France. But if you're really a history junkie, you should get your hands on the book named The Making of Second Life from Wagner James, a long time and famous journalist focused on virtual world and especially Second Life. All my sources are in the description below. This video will not be monetized and credits respected to all the websites and content I have used to picture the great story of Second Life. Thank you for watching this video. It's 30 minutes for you. It's a week of discovering, traveling, translating, writing through the grid for me with you. Have a good Second Life. Bully Coco.